Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you for joining us today on the EYE Show podcast. We're episode 36. Thank you for subscribing and for sending us suggestions and emails and coming in to see me. Uh, we really appreciate it. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about the potential risks of using IPL long term. So many of my videos before have talked about intense pulse light, which is a wonderful way we've uh, been using, thanks to Dr. Uh, Toyos in Tennessee, to get the oil to come out of the meibomian glands. And we've talked about this at length in terms of a dry eye treatment. So you've heard me talk about the two paths to get patients better for dry eye in terms of their symptoms. The most important is to save the meibomian glands, which produce oil. We have them on the upper and lower lid, these glands uh, that look like kind of these white piano keys. So that's the most important thing we need to do, and the second is to help with the symptoms. Within the first path to help save these glands, we really only have five options. The most important, which nobody does, is the warm compress blinking exercise routine. The heat twice a day, 15 minutes at a time at least, is what the literature says is the best, to kind of liquefy the oil, and as you blink and you just gently massage, either up and like kind of side to side or up and down, you're trying to push the oil, or hard blinking after the heat, you're trying to push the oil out just like you milk a cow, same kind of concept. We've been recommending this for years, but it's very difficult for patients to spend that time. So the first uh, FDA approved option or alternative to this or complementary to this was Lipaflow. Uh, so it's FDA approved to slow down the gland loss. And again, Lipaflow is a 12 minute procedure. It's a little apparatus that goes on all four lids and it milks the oil with heat and compression, just like you milk a cow. And I have a video on YouTube and Facebook Live did it for us uh, to show you how it, I experienced it. It's not a terribly painful procedure. It's a little uncomfortable, uh, but it is mostly the pressure that's uncomfortable. The heat feels great. The second option, and there is now more kind of products like this called thermal pulsation, like MyboFlow, Tear Care, which is kind of uh, kind of a warm compress, but then you need to have expression. Um, Ilux, these are all kind of effective in that area as a thermal pulsation, but it has its limitations. Uh, going into the intense pulse light, that's kind of the second or the third category, let's say. So warm compresses, thermal pulsation, which includes LipaFlow, Mybo, uh, Flow, Iglux, and Tiracare. And then there's the third category, which is intense pulse light. I'm gonna spend more time on that one today to talk about the long-term potential consequences. The fourth is basically probing. Uh, and when we go in with a probe into the meibomian gland, we're trying to kind of open up the orifice, just like an old tube of toothpaste. If it's stuck and you're pushing, 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 it'll eventually come out. But if you put a big you know, nail in there, it'll come out more easily. So that's the kind of idea that we're trying to think about with, with probing. And the fifth is the IPL and probing together, which has been shown in one study, a prospective randomized controlled study with no drug company, no Dr. Toyos, no, no Dr. Maskin involved, that showed that together was the best. So what are we talking about in terms of long-term care for patients that have chronic dry eye and chronic meibomian gland dysfunction. This is kind of the wild west. We don't have good literature. We have no prospective randomized controlled studies on the long-term effects of lipoflow, intense pulse, light, uh, and probing. The only thing I think all the dry eye surgeons and doctors in the world can agree on is if we do nothing, those glands will continue to decrease in atrophy. That's just part of aging. We all get older, we all dry up. And so we have to do something. And we really think, and I am in this category, that the sooner the better. Once we see a gland starting to disappear or disappear, it really is a race against time and an urgency because we see so many patients that hit a tipping point where something uh, affects them, whether it's surgery, trauma, a drug, a preservative in the, in the drop, stress, lack of sleep, herpes, a zoster on the face, something will tip them over in which they'll have chronic pain in their eye because there's maybe a lack of oil and the nerves start firing and firing, which can lead to chronic neuropathy, which can be very difficult to treat. 
So we try to save those glands. We want to get the oil to come out as much as possible. But now we're in the situation where we've been using IPL sometimes for five, six, seven years. And we have patients that are getting up to 20 sessions, 30 sessions. And what are we supposed to do? What is the long-term consequences on the meibomian gland? We have no pathological data to say it's damaging so far. Uh, we don't have any idea of what's the effect in terms of long-term on the vitreous the retina, the meibomian glands per se, but so far there's nothing negative that's been reported in the literature to my knowledge. So what we do know is that if you don't use a metal contact lens, and I think there's now been two case reports in the literature, I know one's from Bascom Palmer that was an outside case they, they published, if you don't use a metal contact lens when you're applying a lot of light to the eyelids, you risk inflammation in the eye called uveitis. We've never seen a case here, but it's been reported. So we always use a metal contact lens. Uh, we do know that expression, and there's a bunch of papers I'll put on my blog, that expression after intense pulse light is an absolute necessity. There's been comparisons of IPL alone with IPL and expression, and you get more of the uh, improvement in the tear film, the, the quality, the tear breakup time, the shermers, when you do expression, which makes total sense. Because if you milk a cow, if you just do this to the other and you don't milk the actual physical udder, it's not going to stimulate the udder and the oxytocin and everything happening in the cow or a breast milk gland, let's say, to produce more milk. So the same thing with the oil gland of the eyelid. You have to push the oil out for the body to want to make more, more of these stem cells to make more of the oil. So it's crucial for that. So that's pretty much what we know for sure. We have one patient who's had now more than 20 IPLs who's been uh, Accutane patient. So she, we think the Accutane, the isotretinoin has damaged the meibomian gland uh, stem cell and the orifice of the gland itself, the actual column. And she really relies on the intense pulse light to keep her kind of not feeling pain chronically, but she has started to notice a little change in the coloration of her skin and even the fat pad may be changing. It's still unclear. She had gone to a dermatologist and talked about it and the dermatologist said it could be the IPL. You have to make that decision if you're going to continue or stop. And so she wants to continue. But what we have done is we've decreased the number of IPLs that we do. So generally, Dr. Toyos initially talked about seven like this and then double passes. Uh, we started decreasing it on her very early on because we knew the oil was not coming out really well the first few times and we wanted to, we knew this was going to be a chronic condition so I started going you know just one two three four uh, or one two three four and then one on the top now we're doing one two and then one on the top because we're trying to minimize the amount of energy into the skin and fat and trying to keep the orifice and the oil pumping. And again, do we know what the long-term consequences of this are? No, we don't. It is FDA approved, but there, we are, we're only in the beginning of the assessment of intense pulse light and probing. And as many of you know, we've talked about this before, Dr. Toyos firmly believes that probing is probably not a good idea for the glands because he thinks it could be damaging. There's many doctors that agree with him. Dr. Maskin, who is the inventor of the probing, thinks that the IPL is damaging to the meibomian glands. Uh, they're probably both wrong. <laughs> they're probably both like, they're probably both together are the best. It's just we don't have the data. The question is how, how often should you do IPL also? And again, this is controversial. Of course, if you have a very, very high concentration of intense pulse light, many, many times, let's say in a day, you theoretically could fry a cell, you could damage the cell. But there's been many papers in the dermatology literature showing that multiple treatments of IPL in the skin is actually Im decreases inflammation, improves collagen, kills bacteria and mites, which it does on the eyelid for bacteria and including demodex, and generally decreases vascularity, which is the inflammation. So those four things have been shown repeatedly on the actual skin surface, which m with minimal damage to the actual cell of the skin, which is interesting, especially at the kind of conservative levels of intense pulse light. It seems to possibly even treat certain cancers. Uh, there's not really a concern of cancer with IPL of the skin. Sun exposure, UV is more of a concern. So with the eyelids, what is too much? And again, we don't know. So there are basically two camps for IP, within IPL. We have certain doctors who, if they see the oil that's not pumping out at all, they, if they want to keep trying IPL, they'll try to move the IPLs closer, even sometimes every one to two weeks. The idea that you're trying to milk the cow frequently. Very low dose IPL, not too high, making sure the skin is not affected so you're not going to fry the meibomian glands. And then there's other doctors that feel you should only do IPL maybe once a month. And we don't know which one's the best. There's been no randomized controlled studies where you have the same patient, one eye is once a month, one eye is once a week. We don't know. 
So I encourage people listening to this uh, to think about, well, it's an unknown, but we think it's probably the best option for most patients because probing, while it works, it's very effective, is uncomfortable. It is much more expensive, more time consuming. There's more of an invasive component to it that you're actually physically going into the meibomian gland as opposed to just stimulating the gland with light and then you express it externally. So there's that component as well. So that's my take on the risk of intense pulse light going forward. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to continue to blog about this on my uh, pod, my blog, and hopefully we'll have Dr. Toyos on our podcast very soon as well to get his impression because he's done probably the most in the world for this. So thank you for watching, and please continue to, to send this to friends and family. Uh, please connect with me through my blog or my staff here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you for joining me.